Now, guys, I'm going to level with you. I went out last night for the first time in, like, two years, and I think oh. by, like, the second drink, I was seeing ghosts. So I'm, I'm running it. At, yeah, yeah. I, I'm at, Running like, on nine. fumes. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you okay. something, the way you're moving your arm there and it's disappearing yeah, it is making yeah. us think like we're seeing a ghost. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I... <laughs> um, now, Paul, I'm going to start with you. Um, you know, you have some pivotal scenes with marshmallows in this picture. Do you look at marshmallows differently now? Will you not have a s'more? Will you not put them in your hot cocoa? What are your thoughts on that, Paul Rudd? I think I'm going for it. I don't think I'm. I don't think it's going to hold me back from making a s'more. And even though I feel as if I made some friends with some marshmallows on this film, <laughs> uh, once it was done filming, I'm back to smashing one between a Hershey's chocolate bar and a graham cracker. You're like, screw it, screw yeah. it. Yeah, I no, get we're it. Done. We're done. We're done filming now. I get it, Carrie. Now, talk to me about if someone were to find a ghost in their home or they think there's paranormal activities, what are some of the things that they should do in order to get rid of them, talk to them? Because I feel like you're basically an expert now. So oh, I'm just going to just... Thank you. That's very flattering. Yeah, you're welcome. I mean, I think, I think the technology... I think, you know, you, you burn your sage, right? You burn the sage. You, um, you imagine the door and you invite them to walk through it. I think I've had to do that one a few times. Um... I mean, at the very least, I guess you could just burn the place down if it's really bad. Doesn't work. Boys, it, burning it down doesn't work? Well, in any event, no Ouija boards. If you could speak to a famous ghost, someone in the past, who would that be and why? Someone in the past? Ooh. Yes, someone that was living that is no longer with us. I don't know. I would speak to, like, Cleopatra or something. I would be like, how How did you get so badass and cool? I don't know. <laughs> I would have a lot of questions for her. <laughs> Logan? I mean, Abraham Lincoln, I think. He's a cool, he's a cool president, so <laughs> I don't know, man. What do you want to ask me, Logan? I'm Lincoln right now. I'm wearing the hat. Man. The whole thing. Why didn't you get security, bro? <laughs> you <need> security. <laughs> the ultimate question. Yeah. <laughs> now, Paul, you are an accomplished actor. Um, I want to do just a little improv with you. Um, talk to me about if you were to talk to a famous ghost, who would that ghost be and why? And I am going to transform myself into that ghost. And please talk to me, Paul Rudd. Whoa, okay. Jesus Christ. A lot of questions for Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Jesus, what's the deal? <laughs> and go. go. <laughs> this is a dream. You're having a dream. Wake up. Yeah, I'm, I'm up. I'm up. Um, I appreciate <laughs> you guys both. They're wrapping me up. Thanks so much for talking to us. <laughs> I'm Andrew Dish Nation. Um, Hello, Andrew. Hey, Jason. Now, before we saw the movie, there was a, you know, a video message from you talk, telling us not to spoil the movie and working with your dad. But I, I want you to set the scene for me here because I'm imagining you're on set with your chair. Your dad is next to you. How is he not micromanaging you? How is he not? Jason, why did you do this? Why did you do that? Like, well, how, how are you guys working together? Andrew, I'm confused. Why do you think he wasn't micromanaging me? What gave you the impression <laughs> that was not happening? And you made the chairs seem much further apart. They were this close. It was arm to arm, you know? And uh, my dad's so sweet. When you watch my dad watch a scene, and this is how it's been his entire life, he's acting with the actors. So I got my father next to me and he's like, you know, and he's like doing this scene with them all the time. And, and it's his way of directing. And it's so sweet. And yes, if you brought your parents with you to your work and they weighed in on all of your decisions. Yes, sometimes it would be a little trying, but otherwise it frankly was wonderful. I had the world's foremost Ghostbusters experts sitting right next to me and one of my favorite storytellers. And he made me a better director. So, it, you know, it's so funny because, and you know, I'm sure you've been asked this already, but there's not many properties that stand the test of time that right. people, you know, re, re, you know, there's been cartoons, there's totally. been other reincarnations. Why, why now? Why, 
what is it about this franchise that endures? Oh, it's a great question. And like, you know, I don't go a day of my life and not see a Ghostbusters t-shirt. You know, it's part of all of our hearts. I think it must relate to our relationship with the unknown, our relationship with ghosts. It's universal. It's also one of these movies that, you know, the original was so scary and so funny at the same time. It's so unique in that way. It was, it was a groundbreaking film like that. And uh, why now? I mean, I don't know. I, I just finally grew a pair. I mean, like I just, you know, finally <laughs> developed the confidence and the bravery to do this myself. I've been scared of it my whole life. It loomed as this shadow, this Ghostbuster logo shaped shadow over me. And um, I don't know. I finally developed the confidence because I realized they didn't, the audience didn't need to see my Ghostbusters movie. They needed to see a Ghostbusters movie. And I just had the keys to Ecto-1. You know, I got to actually pull the thing out of the garage, pull out the proton packs and make a movie that was about people discovering the equipment and dusting it off and trying it out for the first time. And that's the experience we all want to have. Where did you come up with the idea to make the mini marshmallows this time? Because I'm sorry, Jason, they're so fucking cute. But like, <laughs> obviously, they're terrorizing. I know. Where did, where did you come up with the idea to mini? Like, how did that come to be? You know, look, uh, Gil Cannon and I were sitting there talking about the original Marshmallow Man. And it's like, how do we top that? You cannot. And then it was like, what if we go the opposite direction? What if they're tiny? What if they are demonic little toddlers that want to break everything and the second we thought of that we imagined them everywhere and then we couldn't go anywhere without thinking of what they would do and how they would destroy things and uh they're addictive and i want all, all i want is more mini marshmallow scenes i mean look, jason this is great freaking merch that you're gonna get off those little those little things so well i can, certainly yeah. i think that made sony happy <laughs> um now this next question last question i'm doing this with everyone i am going to transform myself into a famous former ghost Okay. Jason, who, who am I and what would you like to ask me? Oh God. And why, why am I this person, Jason? That, cause, cause it, I want, cause it should be appropriate to you. No, no. Any famous dead person. Who would you like oh, to speak to? I can yes. talk to any ghost from any era and like ask them a question. I've gotten all kinds of answers today, Jason. So the world is your oyster. Okay. You are the inventor of the pizza, and all I want to say is thank you. That, that, okay, well, you're welcome. I don't know who I am, but... I don't know, Mr. Pizza. I don't know who you are, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but thank you for changing the world, changing my life. You know, whether it's 2 p.m. or 2 a.m., you are the person who has saved me. Jason Reitman, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was lovely. <laughs> thank you.